late July. It's two months since the last time we were here and lovely time of year. Things are growing really fast. Things have changed a lot. Like this was potatoes and we had lovely harvest actually around three and a half kilos, nearly eight pounds of potatoes from this area. And as soon as the potatoes were out, I popped in these multi-sown beetroot, which was sown second week of June. So that's a bit the theme of, of the garden, having transplants ready often rather than sowing direct. Although having said that, actually the carrots there were sown direct and I sowed them between lettuce that were here. This, this patch of ground where the carrots are actually gave nearly eight kilos of lettuce leaves over two and a half months regular picking and uh, that's 18, 19 pounds of lettuces, a lot of leaves. And the plants have mostly finished, we twist them out. So while the carrots are germinating, the lettuce are finishing. And here's one that we left, it's a Batavian type Saragossa variety, which just, it's very slow to go to seed. So it's finally rising up. And actually we've got new lettuce now, so I'm gonna twist it out just to show how we do that. People often ask about how do you clear plants with no dig? So by twisting like that, most of the roots have remained in the ground, which is great. That's food for microbes. And this can go on the compost heap. And now there's space for the carrots to really get going because they've, they've done the kind of hard yards of just establishing, which always takes the most time, that being very small seed. And this is where I'm just keeping an eye on weeds. Like uh, anything I see, <laughs> I pull out small. And actually just here, it caught my eye. There's, for example, a grass. In our climate here, uh, mild, temperate, oceanic, grasses can very quickly take over if, if you don't keep on top of them when they're small. And for me, that's actually quite a big grass. <laughs> I prefer to get them out when they're smaller than that because they have quite tenacious roots and this needs removing to the compost heap, not just hoeing off or whatever, because it would just regrow. Like the weather at the moment this morning, it's, it's mild, it's very pleasant actually, and it's probably gonna rain later. And our days at the moment are not going much warmer than low 20 centigrade, low 70s Fahrenheit. You know, for us, that's pretty warm. Um, the other weed here, or what looks like a weed I'll just mention, and that one there is a soft seeded lamb's lettuce. So there were lamb's lettuce here last winter and I left a few to flower just there and they dropped seeds. I've saved most of the seeds and that would be great. But the best time for sowing them is actually early September in this climate. But that one I'm leaving just to see how it does. There's one or two actually can pop up. And you can see also how we've planted these flowers at the ends, which it's a great source of joy. It's just so nice in a vegetable garden to have some bright color as well. Although all the vegetables are very pretty in their own right, all the different shades of green and textures. But just having a few flowers like these zinnia, uh, some snapdragon, which are nearly flowering. Actually, there's some in that corner, which are. <clears throat> and the marigolds above all, that's really my favorite, the dwarf French marigold. That's from home safe seed. You can easily save your own seed of marigolds in particular in this climate. This here was beetroot, and it's the only bare patch of ground at the moment because it's waiting for, <laughs> it could be several things. I've got some kohlrabi transplants which are ready. I'm still mulling over what to put in here. Um, or it could be some salas for autumn like endive or chicory. There's one beetroot still there, you can see. And then this was the spring onions that were still here last time. And the final harvest came to three kilos of spring onion. So that's uh, quite, quite big ones. I let them get quite big, you get more, more bang for your buck. And they, they just cropped and cropped for a long time. As soon as they were finished, we popped in these dwarf French bean plants in, that must've been late May. And they, they've just started cropping now. Because our summers are not hugely hot, they take a fair while to get going. Uh, this July has not been particularly warm, um, but there are now some nice beans on some of these plants. But what's also happening here is snails. And I have been finding a snail or two. Pests has is, is just become more common in summertime because in the warmth they proliferate. And this does not help. <laughs> We've cut the stinging nettles here once, and I like them actually. I 
it's a nice source of wildlife and mostly good. Uh, but there's definitely under there, there's a few slugs and snails hiding and they come out at night. And that's what's causing this leaf damage where you see this sort of chunks eaten out of leaves. That's usually slugs and snails. If it was birds, which actually don't eat these leaves, but bird damage is more pecking around the edge. And I'm not too worried because they're still cropping. They're, they're doing all right. But what's also going on here is things like this plant. Uh, it's actually, we call it old man's beard. It makes seeds of sort of beard, white beard in the late autumn. Very vigorous plant. And I have to keep pulling it back. It's actually rooting on the other side in the neighbor's ground. So I just keep pulling it back, but it, it'll be rooting into, into here. Uh, quite a lot of these hedgerow plants and like the honeysuckle there and, and hedge are rooting into the ends of these beds. So slightly reducing the growth in the garden. These tomatoes had only just gone in the ground when we were here last. So you can see how well they've grown, different varieties. And I'll just mention one thing here, which is this particular plant growing very tall uh, is running out of stake. And we're very close now to the time when I find it good to pinch out the top ping. So that's, that's now stopping the tomato making any new growth at the top. It, it won't make any more new trusses. And it means that what is on the plant, the resources go into that. And even like there's a very baby truss there where tomatoes will form. All being well, as long as we don't get late blight, that's always a slight risk. But that there should be time for those tomatoes to ripen before, say, early October, when there's declining warmth and light, so the, the fruits are no longer good. And then you need to keep removing the side shoots or suckers like that <clears throat> all the time, still. And just looking down the plant in case there's any more like that. So keeping that stem bare, for this is for cordon tomatoes. If you're growing bush tomatoes, this doesn't apply. Just let them go and keep picking. And in fact, you can see on this plant, some. we have been picking a few, the first ripe tomatoes. Uh, that's as good as it gets in our climate to have them by, by the end of July, really, outside. And that's sun gold, which I find consistently early. Very good variety for that and also quite prone to this leaf roll. Uh, <clears throat> that is not herbicide damage, the aminopyrolid, or, or any other problem. Um, it's a lower leaf, which is just getting quite poor quality um, growth, and it's not contributing anything or very little now to the main growth of the plant. So I, that one's not breaking off, but I actually um, haven't got my knife on the other. Normally cut them off or twist them off. So just leaving on the top leaves there. Here there's some lovely sorrel that's been here all along and it's still cropping nicely. The kale plant is still cropping nicely. And then this last time we were here was carrots. And we harvested six kilos, just over six kilos, around 14 pounds of carrots from that area there. That was a Nantes variety of early fast growing carrot. And do you know what this is? This is Swedes, which we transplanted on the 29th of June from a sowing made four weeks earlier in the greenhouse in a module. I'd like to sow them under cover because these summer brassicas or brassicas that grow in summer are so prone to pest damage. And that's why this mesh cover is on keeping off not only the more obvious butterflies, which would obviously bring caterpillars, but there's a particular pest of Swede called the Swede or gall midge, which uh, eats the heart, the growing heart of the plant, the little new leaves, and, and it basically destroys the center growing point. And the plant then is massively checked and has to make new side shoots to grow again and you end up with a much smaller harvest. So I really pay attention to that one. And so far, so good is all I can say. The, uh, there's a few slug holes and things, but actually basically that, for summer brassicas, that, that is good. If I just take up this corner, you can perhaps see more clearly um, the lovely leaves there. You can even see the, just a hint of a, of a developing 
Swede uh, beginning there, but they're, they're not doing their thing yet for a little while, and that's fine. They're just making leaves, and then by late summer, early autumn, you start to see a root. And I'll probably leave this cover on for another month, maybe three weeks. By then, in this climate here, we're, we're through the worst of the past season apart from butterflies and they're controllable. You can either squash them uh, or I use the spray Bacillus syringiensis and, and I just keep the plants tidy, remove the outer leaves. We have had here a fantastic harvest of onions. <laughs> they're multi sown so they're grown in clumps like this. You know that might have been a clump of four for example. You get one little one and three, decent size, very happy with that. And We've just pulled them and we bend over the necks a bit like that because this variety, Gelber Lair from Austria, is just a little bit prone to make a fat stem, which means to get a nice onion with a tidy neck, um, doing that bending over really helps to um, dry off the, the neck a bit and make it into a nice onion eventually. And they could either stay there for a while in they actually dry better outside even if it's raining a bit. There's wind and then there's sun as well. Uh, but if you've got space undercover or in a greenhouse sale or wherever it might be, the, these could go undercover now and, and finish their drying in there for the best part of a month probably before they're dry enough to cut the tops off. I reckon that when there's this much green still, the, there's still goodness going into the bulb and helping it to ripen even grow a bit more. And I've just noticed one thing here, which is a seed head. Actually, there are a couple here. There's just two out of about, um, well, there's a, maybe 60 onions there, so it's nothing to worry about really. But where, where you have a seed head like that, it's good to, it's, this won't store so well. Well, it won't store, <laughs> full stop really, um, not long term. But this is very edible now. So we'll just cut the top off and that's an onion for immediate consumption. But for a small area of crown, this is a really good harvest. And, you know, that's winter food that can be eaten at any time over the next few months. Whereas here we have a summer harvest that's just beginning. And this is the <coughs> soybeans for edamame. So what we're looking for is pods that are just noticeably swelling. And then you can feel the, the little firm bean in there. And normally you cook them like that with the pod on. But I'll just open this out so that you can see the actual soybeans in there. There's three in this case. And they're still green, which suggests that there's actually no rush to eat them. They, they, they do go much paler than that as they ripen, uh, almost white. Um, but we, we had some for, for, for a meal just two days ago, actually, and they're very tasty. You just sort of put them in your mouth and pull out the the actual beans inside, um, three or four minutes cooking, no more. It's a luxury. It's, this is not going to give a huge amount of food, but it, it's just a lovely taste of summer, <clears throat> something different. And this also, in our, in our weather here, is a bit of a luxury. The sweet potatoes, which I'd only just planted two months ago, and you can see they're, they're rambling. They're, they're quite spreading plants. Um, be, be ready for that. <laughs> they, they will take up a lot of space if you've got it. Um, I might need to just prune them a bit or, or just push them back. You could do that as well. <clears throat> and I'm still not convinced I'm going to get a huge harvest here, but we shall see. Uh, we'll film probably early October or mid-October. We'll catch that harvest all being well. While the leeks will carry on for longer than that, for sure. And that's a variety of filamen, which I found really, really reliable and that is multi-sown. It was multi-sown in early April. And last time we were here, that was pea plants, which we were picking regularly for the pea shoots. And these, this variety of leek, all being well, will start cropping, say, September, within even six weeks, actually. We could cut out or twist out a larger one from each clump. You've got many options with leeks when you harvest them. They, they, they can sit there for longer, or you can harvest them when they're still quite young. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I just mentioned the California poppy, which is self-seeding. These beautiful snapdragons and the chives, which 
often look a bit disappointing, like with this yellow leaf here, but actually I keep cutting them and they just regrow so fast, they hardly ever look like they've been harvested. Uh, but you sort of fish out the yellow bits and you've still got a lot of nice green. So at this time of year, coming into autumn, the chives are good because there's not so much fresh onion green anymore. In the spring, spring onions are in season and early summer. And now we're starting to see more mildew on onion leaves, uh, the same as with pea leaves. And in fact, that's another option that I would have there. There's a variety of pea called terrain, which I might well plant there. <laughs> still mulling that one. Uh, because it's a, a variety that's been bred to have less mildew on its leaves and so it's potentially good for autumn cropping but in autumn it's not pea season so that's the risk when, when you grow vegetables out of their natural season it's not so easy you don't, you don't get such a big harvest and it would be the same for potatoes it's become a bit of a fashion I feel to plant potatoes in the summer for new potatoes in autumn even going up to Christmas so well, that's the slogan new potatoes for Christmas but you, you risk getting blight in September late blight and you, you will find the harvest is not huge I don't want to put you off doing it but just to to be clear on that um, t two or three vegetables that are really in season for sowing now are coriander bulb fennel and um, the bulb fennel will crop October November the coriander could crop right through autumn even survive the winter in in our climate here i've had coriander survive in this garden over winter and then crop again in the spring and one other for sowing right at the end of july <clears throat> is chinese cabbage uh, to make a lovely heart in the autumn i find it's the best time of year very specific date the last week of july i find works really well for chinese cabbage if you like that and one caveat to that one is very prone to pests Every pest likes Chinese cabbage, slugs, aphids, caterpillars, you name it. So be prepared with some good mesh and uh, tidy up the leaves as well as they go.